How many times do I have to tell you? I need to rest to protect our baby. I'm eight months pregnant, and there's a risk of premature labor, so I have to stay on bed rest. This is a small, precious life that could be born at any moment. But when I try to lie down and rest, my husband says, "Pregnancy isn't an illness, so don't slack off with the housework." His harsh words didn't stop there. When I turned around, I saw his face turn pale in an instant. What did he see? My name is Melanie. I live in a small apartment with my husband Ken. But soon, our life as just the two of us will come to an end. There's a new life growing inside me, and I'm now eight months pregnant. When I first found out I was pregnant, I couldn't believe it. Joy and disbelief overwhelmed me, and I couldn't sleep at night. Every day, our baby was growing little by little inside me. The first time I saw its tiny heart beating during an ultrasound, tears fell from my eyes. The heartbeat of that tiny life felt like a new rhythm in my life, like a drumbeat filling my days with new hope. But as the pregnancy progressed, I found myself struggling with the changes in my body. There were days when I wondered when the morning sickness would finally end. My belly grew so big that I couldn't wear the clothes I liked anymore. But when I thought about the baby being born safely, these struggles seemed trivial. Giving birth is a major milestone in life. I believe this experience will strengthen the bond between Ken and me. I sincerely hope our precious child will come into this world safely. Now I just cherish each day, waiting for that important moment to arrive. I met my husband in high school. He was the most popular boy in class, and it was easy to see why. He always made everyone smile, and he was kind to everyone. I still vividly remember the first time we talked. Melanie, can you help me with this math problem? He asked, coming over to my seat. That was our first conversation. He seemed capable of doing anything, but he apparently had some trouble with studying. When I carefully explained how to solve the problem, he beamed and said, "Thanks, Melanie. You really helped me." I was captivated by his smile. As time passed, we went from being just classmates to confiding in each other. Even after we went to college, we made time on weekends to talk about our studies and future dreams. He always listened to me seriously, sometimes giving me tough advice. But that was part of his charm. However, life after marriage turned out to be tougher than I had imagined. Especially after I found out I was pregnant, my health deteriorated, making it hard to keep working. At first, Ken was worried about me, but gradually he began urging me to quit so he could focus on work. Our household chores were supposed to be shared from the beginning, with the person who noticed something needed doing taking care of it, as my husband suggested. At first, this freedom felt refreshing, and we adapted to the style of taking responsibility for what we noticed. But things didn't go as smoothly as expected. In reality, I ended up doing most of the chores. Ken, the laundry is piling up. Can you take care of it today? I suggested one day. The laundry had piled up into a mountain, and it was too much for me to handle alone. Yeah, just a moment. Let me finish this work email first. He replied without looking up from his computer. I knew that just a moment could last indefinitely. As time went on, his idea of whoever notices does it gradually turned into pretending not to notice. I couldn't help but feel that he had intended this from the start. Even when he hung the laundry, he rarely helped fold it. When I asked him to help fold the laundry, his usual response was, "Yeah, I got it, but I'm a bit busy right now, so I'll do it later." The later that rarely came left me increasingly frustrated. I sighed countless times. One evening, when he came home, I decided to talk to him about sharing the chores. I sat down in the living room where he was eating and looked at him seriously. No, I might have been glaring at him. I need to talk to you about the chores. It's starting to get a bit overwhelming. Maybe we should rethink how we divide the work. He looked a little surprised and said, "Has it been that bad? But we agreed when we got married that whoever notices should do it, right?" 
It's been tough because I've ended up doing almost everything, I said, no longer angry, just tired. I think we should set more concrete rules so that it's a bit easier for both of us, I added carefully. I really wanted to say, you need to pull your weight, but I held back. After a moment of silence, he sighed and said, Fine, if you want rules, let's make them. His tone was condescending. To be honest, I'm so busy with work that I can't handle everything at home too. I'm willing to share more, but it has to be within what I can do, he continued. I didn't like how he said it, but I reluctantly agreed. That night, we made a detailed list of chores and decided who would be responsible for what. But as expected, the new rules didn't last long. They only revealed that he was a man of empty promises. I understood that his work was busy, but as the days passed without him making any effort to keep his promises, my disappointment grew. Ken, you forgot to take out the trash. Oh, sorry, I forgot. But I'm really tired today, so can you take it out tomorrow morning? In that moment, something snapped inside me. To him, chores were something I did, and he only helped when it was convenient. After venting like this, people often ask me why I married such a man. Before we got married, he was a kind and thoughtful gentleman who always cared about those around him. He would buy me my favorite flowers on our dates and offer me his hand as we walked just like in movies. But after we got married, he changed completely like a different person. Once he had me, his considerate behavior vanished, revealing his true self, someone who didn't bother to keep up the pretense. A year into our marriage, I started losing my appetite and feeling feverish. At first, I thought it was just a cold and didn't pay much attention. I had no time to rest at home, constantly busy with chores and my husband's demands. But my condition only worsened, making it a struggle to get through the daily chores. One day, while cooking, I was suddenly overcome with nausea and almost collapsed on the floor. Even then, my husband was in the living room watching TV, ignoring my suffering. Ken, can you help me? I called out weakly. He reluctantly turned off the TV and coldly asked, What's wrong? Are you sick? I'm feeling nauseous. I need to lie down for a bit. Can you take care of dinner? But his face showed clear displeasure. Why do I need to do that? Just because you're sick doesn't mean you should drag me into it. His angry words made me want to cry, but I held back my tears and somehow managed to support myself as I returned to my room. That night, he came back from eating out without saying a word, and there was nothing for me. The days felt increasingly empty. One morning, the smell of my favorite food made me feel nauseous. Instead, I had a strange craving for fast food fries, which I normally didn't eat. This inexplicable symptom made me suspect something. Could it be? I wondered as I headed to the pharmacy to buy a pregnancy test. When I got home and took the test in the bathroom, it clearly showed positive. I was pregnant. I regretted not realizing sooner because of my irregular periods, but discovering this new life filled me with complex emotions. That night, I decided to tell my husband, I need to talk to you. It's important. I started, trying to sound calm. What is it? If it's about divorce, I'm not doing it. I thought to myself, if I could, I would have already left. With that thought in mind, I sat across from him at the table and cautiously said, Ken, I'm pregnant. His reaction was unexpected. No way, really? That's awesome! He exclaimed, his face lighting up with a big smile. Seeing him so happy made me let out a sigh of relief. Is it a boy or a girl? He asked excitedly, firing off questions. I don't know yet, I replied with a smile. If it's a boy, I'll teach him baseball. If it's a girl, maybe piano lessons. He continued, already planning our child's future. His enthusiasm was so surprising that I wondered if he had hit his head or something. 
Are you really that happy? I asked, looking into his eyes. Of course. From now on, it'll be the three of us. If you need anything, just tell me. He said with a serious expression, holding my hand. His words gave me hope that maybe he would change even a little. But that hope soon crumbled. After finding out about the pregnancy, my health rapidly declined. The morning sickness was so severe that I could barely eat or even smell anything without getting sick. I hoped that with my husband's support, it would be a little easier, but his response was far from what I expected. One day, as I lay on the living room sofa, he came home. Without even glancing at me, he went straight to the kitchen, opened the fridge, and searched for something to eat. Then he turned to me with a look of dissatisfaction. Hey, where's my dinner? Why haven't you made anything? He asked, his voice tinged with irritation. I'm sorry, the morning sickness is really bad today and I couldn't move. Could you please buy something for yourself? He frowned and threw out an unbelievable remark. Why can't you even cook a meal? Are you just being lazy? His words made me feel nothing but sadness. It seemed he had no understanding of my suffering. The next day, I managed to drag myself to the washing machine to do laundry when he approached me. Why are you using the dryer? It's a waste of money. Don't slack off with my money. I'm too tired to hang them up. If it bothers you, why don't you do it? I replied, struggling to stay calm. You're telling me this after I've come home tired from work? You've been lying down all day. At this point, his presence felt like a bigger burden than all the piled up chores. Another day, when I told him I wanted some fries, he coldly replied, Go get them yourself. Stop being so needy. His disregard for my condition, prioritizing his own convenience, left me feeling completely exhausted. But what hurt the most was when he said, Your constant vomiting is making me sick. Could you do it quietly? When I heard those words, I couldn't stop crying. I wondered if this man who lacked the most basic empathy could really be my husband. Ken, can't you see how much I'm suffering? Your child is in my belly. I pleaded weakly as tears flowed. I get it, but your vomiting is making me feel awful too. His words crushed me, leaving me speechless. His indifference and coldness chilled my heart, making life in this household increasingly unbearable. I was so mentally and physically exhausted that I could no longer think of what to do. Even as my morning sickness finally began to subside, his attitude didn't change. He couldn't understand my situation and offered no help with daily tasks. For example, when we went shopping, I ended up carrying the heavy bags while he walked ahead, as if in a hurry. Ken, wait a second. The bags are heavy. Can you help me? Alright, but I'll go on ahead. He replied without even looking back. Are you listening to me? What kind of person does that? I thought, feeling frustrated. Strangers, like an elderly woman or a businessman, often ended up helping me. It was the same when we went out to eat. I would tell him that I couldn't eat sushi because of the pregnancy, but he'd just say, Well, I want to eat it. If you can't, then don't eat anything. Sitting next to him during meals became unbearable. What made it even harder was when we shopped for baby items. We would go together, but seeing other happy couples choosing things for their babies filled me with a sense of emptiness. The store was full of cute clothes and toys, and everyone seemed to be having a great time. Hey, what do you think of this stroller? It's light and functional. Seems easy to use. Yeah, it's fine, but it's expensive. Isn't there a cheaper one? But it's good quality and will last a long time. I want to choose something nice for our baby. He didn't hide his irritation. Yeah, that's why it's expensive. Let's think about it some more. Money doesn't grow on trees. 
I know money isn't infinite, but this is something we'll use for years. As long as it can carry a baby, anything will do. On the way home that day, we hardly spoke. The car was filled with a heavy silence, and I stared blankly out the window. Thinking about how other couples seemed so excited to prepare for their baby's arrival, I felt the distance between us and couldn't stop the tears. There's something else I want to discuss. Can't we talk about it at home? Once we got home, I tried to bring it up again. Let's try to be more considerate of each other. Our baby is going to be born soon. Melanie, you're just tired. You're overthinking things. Of course I'm thinking about it. It's our first child. That's why I'm doing things my way. Isn't that enough? Doing things your way? How can you be so sure? This is our child. Aren't you excited? Please, try to be more supportive. But he just said, Yeah, yeah, I get it. Let's just go to bed. You're tired. He left the room, leaving me feeling even more hopeless. Lying in bed, I wished he would change, but that hope kept fading. Unable to bear it anymore, I vented to a friend. You should just leave him. But there was a reason I couldn't. Even though he seemed indifferent, his attitude completely changed when he saw the ultrasound pictures. Wow, is this our baby? That's amazing! I loved seeing that sparkle in his eyes. When we found out the baby was a boy, he literally jumped for joy. A boy! That's awesome, Melanie! I'll teach him everything I know. But despite his excitement, his coldness and lack of understanding in daily life remained unchanged. We continued to have discussions, but I couldn't shake the hope that he might change once the baby was born. Despite the daily frustration, I decided to endure it for the sake of the baby. By the eighth month of pregnancy, my body had reached its limit. My belly was constantly tight, and I was diagnosed with a high risk of premature labor, so I was ordered to stay on bed rest. I had to reluctantly leave my job and spend my days lying down at home. My husband would look down at me with an expression I couldn't read, muttering, must be nice, just laying around all day. His words hurt, but I could only ignore them. Every time I ordered delivery or dried laundry in the dryer, I could hear him saying it was a waste. He was extremely strict about finances, hating any kind of waste. You're a housewife now, so you need to take care of the house properly. By this point, I almost found myself wondering what ridiculous thing he'd say next. One day, as soon as he got home, he looked around the house as usual and said, It's a mess in here. What have you been doing all day? I'm sorry. I haven't been feeling well today. He sighed and said, I get that you're sick, but try a little harder. I don't want to come home to this mess after a long day. Despite everything, there were moments when he could be kind. One evening, when I was suddenly hit with severe abdominal pain, he rushed over, worried. Hey, are you okay? Should we go to the hospital? I'll call a taxi. His concern surprised me, and I thought, maybe he still has some kindness left. I felt a bit relieved, sensing that there was still some love left in him. Thank you, but I'll be fine after a little rest. Don't push yourself, I'm really worried he said, holding my hand. The warmth of his hand reminded me of the gentle husband I used to know. The next morning, before leaving for work, he asked, Are you feeling better today? That simple question lightened my heart so much. But those moments of kindness were short-lived. Daily life was still filled with battles over his lack of understanding. I struggled each day, caught between hoping he might change and facing the reality. Still, the thought of our child being born kept me going, believing that all the hardships would be worth it. A week before my due date, my belly became even tighter, and the doctor told me that the baby could be born any day. When I told my husband, he said, The baby's healthy, right? Then everything's fine. 
His casual attitude made me uneasy. Sure, the baby was healthy, but at the time, I was terrified that the baby might be born too soon. Then something happened that finally put an end to my life with this terrible husband. That day, his awful behavior was on full display again. When I tried to warm up the delivery meal, he said, Pregnancy isn't an illness. You don't have a 104 degree fever, so don't slack off with the housework. His words pierced my heart, but I could only endure them. Then he opened a can of beer and started drinking, which pushed my frustration to the limit. What do you want to drink? He teased, continuing to taunt me. Just one more month and you can have one. He said, turning around, but his face suddenly changed. What's with that face? I asked, turning around slowly. My brother, Jack, was standing behind me. He glared at my husband with an expression full of anger. What do you mean by just one more month? He asked, his voice full of fury. Well, uh. My husband stammered, his voice shaking. You also said pregnancy isn't an illness, didn't you? Jack continued, his voice rising. Uh, I might have said something like that, or not. My husband muttered, terrified. Melanie is going through a tough time right now. Yes, I I'm sorry, I might have gone too far. My husband said, now cowering in fear. My brother, still seething, wasn't done. Might have? Really? Oh, I'm sorry, it was just a bad joke. My husband apologized, now trembling. This isn't time for jokes. You should be thinking more about Melanie. My husband feared my brother not only because he was my brother, but also because my brother ran our family company. After our father passed away seven years ago, my brother took over and has been running the company ever since. Both my husband and I worked at the company, so my brother had a close relationship with us both as family and professionally. My brother had always been protective of me, and he often checked in on how I was doing. One day, I decided to vent to my brother about my husband's behavior. He doesn't take my pregnancy seriously, I confessed to my brother. He listened intently, and he wanted to confront my husband, but I stopped him. Thank you, but if you scold Ken, it'll just make things more uncomfortable. Please, let it go, I pleaded. You're just gonna keep getting hurt. I just needed someone to listen. He can be so petty. It's a hassle, I explained. That day, my brother came over to check on me because he was worried about my health. The doorbell was broken, and the door was unlocked, so he came inside just as my husband was saying, just one more month and you can have a drink. Hearing that, my brother couldn't contain his anger. If you're a man, stop making excuses. Do you know how much your wife is suffering? What's with your attitude? My brother yelled, advancing on my husband. Oh, I'm sorry, I really am. My husband stammered, apologizing profusely. Thank you, Jack, but it's okay now. I intervened, trying to calm the situation. Melanie, don't put up with this. I can see how much you're struggling. You should have told me sooner. My brother said gently, almost making me cry. After that, We sat down in the living room to talk. My brother, still angry, laid into my husband with harsh words. I want to tell you to leave this house right now, but this is between you two. However, don't forget that you have a small life about to be born. His words left my husband speechless. To protect the baby, Melanie will stay at my house until she gives birth. You'll have to manage on your own. My brother declared. The sudden turn of events left me shocked, but also relieved by my brother's words. Meanwhile, my husband was visibly shaken. But I can't cook or do laundry. Figure it out yourself. My brother cut him off sternly. The weight of his words left us all silent. In that moment, I felt a mix of anger and sadness toward my husband. We never thought it would come to this, did we? I said quietly to him. 
I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I don't know what to do. He replied, sounding lost. I'll do what my brother says, but I know you care about the baby. You'll have to manage on your own. But until then, you need to pull yourself together, I suggested. Thank you. I admit I've done wrong. I'll change, so please trust me. He said, giving me a glimmer of hope. At the same time, I made a decision in my heart. This will be the last chance. If he doesn't change, I'll divorce him. I also considered raising the child on my own. The next day, I began preparing to move to my brother's house. If you need anything, just let me know. My brother said, his kindness deeply touching me. My husband helped me pack my things, all the while looking like he was lost in thought. I'm really reflecting on this. I'll wait for the day you come back. He said, leaving one final message before I left. The days at my brother's house felt like living in a completely different world. My sister-in-law, Allison's warm care, brought a sense of peace I hadn't felt in a long time. One day, while looking at the fluffy bed she had specially prepared for me, we had a deep conversation. Melanie, we're looking forward to the baby's arrival, so take your time to rest. She said, gently handing me a blanket. Her kindness always warmed my heart. Thank you so much. I want to be as considerate as you are. I said, expressing my gratitude. I've been submissive to my husband for so long, but maybe that's why I spoiled him. I confided. Allison smiled gently and said, People can change, Melanie. But sometimes, you also need to be strong to protect yourself. Encouraged by her words, I strengthened my resolve. If he truly reflects and changes his ways for our sake, I'll acknowledge that. But I won't support him unconditionally anymore. I decided firmly. That resolve is important. But remember, don't be too harsh on yourself. Focus on your happiness and your baby's future. She said, offering more support. One day, I returned to our old home with Allison to pick up the rest of my things. When we opened the door, we were shocked to see the living room had turned into a trash heap. My husband was lying on the sofa, looking exhausted. What is this? It stinks. Are you okay? I asked. I have a bit of a fever and can't move. He replied weakly. But when we took his temperature, it was only 99 degrees, just a mild fever. Allison and I exchanged glances, both in disbelief. You don't even have a fever. This is pathetic, I said. Hey, don't talk to a sick person like that, he protested. Seriously? Look who's talking, I thought, feeling exasperated. Oh, by the way, I could really use some jelly. Could you get some for me? He asked. Why should I? I retorted. At least do the laundry yourself. I said, reminding him of his previous words. What was it you said to me before? Something about not slacking off unless you had a 104 degree fever? I shot back. Allison stifled a laugh and I added, Make sure the place is clean before the baby is born. With that, I left the room. Later, he sent me a desperate message asking for help, but I just replied, don't slack off. On the way back, Allison and I had a long conversation. Melanie, you did well, but give him a chance. People can change, she said, encouraging me. I know, but I'm done spoiling him. If he really wants to change, he'll do it on his own. I replied, thinking carefully about the future as we headed home. I felt strongly that this experience was a true test and an opportunity for growth. After overcoming the threat of premature labor, the day of delivery finally arrived. I was filled with a mix of nerves and anticipation, overwhelmed by emotions. But the midwife calmly welcomed us, saying, it's going to be okay. Let's do this together. Take a deep breath and push now, she instructed. 
My husband held my hand tightly, occasionally encouraging me, saying, "You're doing great, Melanie. You can do this." Those words were incredibly reassuring. As I fought through the pain, the midwife's voice saying, "Just a little more. You're about to meet your baby," gave me felt the strength to keep going. My husband, tense and sometimes tearful, stayed by my side, supporting me the whole time. And finally, our baby was born. You did it! A healthy 6.6 pound baby boy. The midwife announced. She gently placed our tiny baby on my chest. The warmth and weight of our newborn brought us immense joy, washing away all the struggles. Tears streamed down my husband's face. His expression was one of relief, as if all his worries and tension had melted away. Thank you so much, Melanie, for giving birth to a healthy baby. He said through tears, his hands trembling as he held mine tightly. As the sound of our baby's first cry filled the room, it marked the beginning of our new family. The sound resonated deeply in our hearts. This is our baby. I said softly, and my husband nodded, smiling with teary eyes. Yeah, we'll support him together. I'm so proud of how strong you've been. He said, pulling me close and gazing at me intently. It's amazing that this tiny, perfect life is really ours. He whispered as he gently stroked the baby's tiny hand with his finger. Watching him, I realized just how much he had been waiting for this moment, and I felt truly grateful for the changes in him. Yes, our days ahead will be completely different, filled with new challenges, but we'll face them together. I told him. He nodded, saying. Being by your side makes me the happiest man in the world. He quietly stroked our baby's head. That day became an unforgettable treasure for us as a couple, making a big step into our life as a family. We made a fresh commitment to support each other and raise this small new life together. Returning home from the hospital, our new life began. At first, I had some doubts about my husband's skills in taking care of the house. Sometimes he'd fall asleep before our son, exhausted from the day. He struggled to handle a knife properly or folded the laundry in a messy way. Ken, not like that. Hold the knife this way. I said patiently, teaching him bit by bit. Thanks. I'm still learning, but I'm trying my best. He responded, showing a positive attitude. He's so cute, isn't he? My husband said lovingly, gazing at our son. Seeing him look at our son with such love, I was truly glad I didn't go through with a divorce. My husband was changing little by little, but it was real. Through our son, he was growing too. One evening, we sat in the living room talking about our family's future. Ken, it was tough at first, but I never expected you to work so hard. I said, impressed. Becoming a father has made me think about a lot of things. I want to be a better father and husband for you and our son. He replied. Hearing that made me happy. Let's keep building a home full of smiles, I said. I promise. He replied, nodding firmly. From that day on, I felt that our family was steadily moving forward. The birth of our son brought new hope and joy to our marriage, and my husband's transformation was leading to happiness for our whole family.